Let me now welcome our Executive Chairman and Group CEO, Mr. Kadri Muhadeen. He'll give us a short overview on how we managed our business operations in the last 12 months. Mr. Muhadeen, the current situation is challenging the aviation industry on a global level. How do we perform as Amac Aerospace, a group of companies, in the last 12 months? Good morning, Walid. Thank you for your question. Today being Friday, the 21st of uh, April, 2023, and it just happened to be the first day of Eid after Ramadan. Therefore, I'd like to take the opportunity to wish the community of our Muslim employees and clients a very happy Eid and prosperous year. May God have peace on all of us and the other ethnics and people with different beliefs and religion. We're all human by the end of the day and we're overlooked by God. Going back to your question, at AMAC, we like challenges and we thrive on it. There is no limit uh, to what we can do. Uh, we have excelled in our performance in many ways. So this year is no different to last year to us. If anything, the scale of the challenge has grown up, but we are up to it. We are full, thankfully to our uh, customers trust in us and to our workforce that deliver the quality that our customers seek from us. So this year is no different to what's gonna come. We expect the same. We can compromise few things, but not our quality in performing. The aviation industry is registering growing numbers of flights and sold aircraft in the commercial as much as the private aviation sector. Is this true for Amac Aerospace, a group of companies? This is a very true statement, Walid. Uh, after COVID, although during COVID we were doing very well, but after COVID, there's a big surge, commercially, uh, corporate and VIP. This is reflected by our facility in Bodrum being full. No doubt our group CEO will expand on that. And also on the uh, workload we have here in Basel and other facilities. The people took a rest during COVID, but now they're splashing their wallets out with buying aircraft commercially, corporate and VIP. And that can only be good for uh, companies like AMAC, depending on the scale of work they can take and the demand from the customers on them. And did you yourself travel more in the past months to meet with clients than before? Always traveling uh, to meet our clients because most of our clients are, are our personal friends. Uh, we've been uh, going for years. Some of them are 10, 15, some of them 20 years old. So this will always continue and there is no stop to it. Even during COVID, we were doing that. So uh, friendship, I think, with the clients supersedes their commercial demand with us. And we have an obligation to meet that. So. You've expanded Amac Aerospace's network with new hangars and offices, and recently a new office in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. What do you expect from this new location? Expansion is always on the cards with Amac. Uh, we did, as I said in the previous uh, interview, that we have incorporated a company in Saudi Arabia, but we have not yet uh, built or acquired a hangar there. But we are in dialogue with a few parties, among them uh, governmental, uh, personal, and we will see where we're gonna land. Uh, the situation in the Gulf is always an interesting formula for us. And uh, Saudi is no different. It's the largest territory with a big number of uh, corporate and VVIP airplanes. So we are focused at the moment on that as well as keeping the trend going with the rest of our clients in the Gulf. And Amac Aerospace has a diverse workforce more than 40 different nationalities working under your hangar roofs. What do you appropriate 
to be the right attraction for people to come and work for this company? We have in the group about 100, 1,000, sorry, 1,500 employees. That's including the airline in Turkey, which is part of our group. Uh, they come here for a reason. AMAC has become an institution. We had people who left AMAC after working for a few years with us. And we were told as part of their feedback that when they go for an interview, once they say they are ex-AMAC employees, the interview is very short and they were granted the work. So whether they are from the Far East, the West, North or South, it doesn't really matter. There is one religion in uh, here, and that's work under Amak's roof. So you ask why the people come here. The attraction is the name, the reputation, the learning curve. Amak is a very big school that teaches and learn at the same time. Learning academically is very simple. You read a book, you look at a video, you learn something. But to learn culture is something very difficult. And this is the diversity AMAC has. We have customers from four corners of the world. While the quality is the same that everybody requires, but to get to that point, you have to go through the cultural barrier. I don't call it barrier, I call it challenge. And our people are prepared because of the diversity of their ethnic origins. And I'm one of them. And we're all proud to all amalgamate under the flag of AMAC. Thank you very much for your answers. We thank you for watching. We look forward to meeting you again in person soon or at eBase. But until then, stay safe, everyone. <laughs>